next day. Were you one of the many people who lined up for hours last summer just to get a Redskins autograph? Do you remember these scenes? Actually, getting sports memorabilia signed in front of you is really the only way to guarantee its authenticity. In fact, fake autographs are a big business. The On Your Side investigators bought six celebrity autographs and put them to the test. Rachel DePompa shows us just how quickly you could throw away your money by someone who's faking famous. They are the heroes on the screen and on the field. Redskins training camp in Richmond was a hot spot for autographs. Fans held signs begging for them. The competition for celebrity autographs is fierce because those signatures sell and the crooks know it. Forger doesn't care about you. They don't care if this is for a birthday present. They don't care if it's for a wounded veteran. They don't care if it's for your grandma. We went online and bought a half dozen autographs from sports, TV, and the movies. Then we headed to professional sports authenticators in Santa Ana, California, one of the top certification companies of celebrity memorabilia in the nation. A place where experts go high tech to find out if an autograph is real or fake. But what this does, it gives me the ability to look at the ink. Principal authenticator Steve Grad says the best forgers track down aged ink and antique paper to pull off the con. Others use a Sharpie and a little artistic talent. Grad uses electronic microscopes and computers to sniff out the imitations. So what about the autographs we bought, real or fake? In his opinion, four out of six were bogus including autographs from basketball legend Michael Jordan, baseball slugger Albert Pujols, and Sex in the City star Sarah Jessica Parker. We paid about $300 for those four autographs, but Grad says they aren't worth a dime. He says when he put them side by side with his database of 140,000 famous signatures, the slant, shape, and sizing did not match up. I don't even think the person who did this one on the photo knew what her autograph looked like. They do anything to make money. So how big a business are fake autographs? The group that we targeted was making uh, over $100 million a year. Retired FBI Special Agent Jeff McKinney was a lead investigator for Operation Bullpen, the largest fake autograph bust in the U.S. He helped bring down a counterfeit ring that sold forged baseball autographs coast to coast. Part of the problem for consumers is that expert opinions on what's real are just that, opinions. Remember that Albert Pujols autograph? The one Grad said was a forgery? Sizing, slant, pressure, it just reeks to death of just being bad. The seller told us it's Grad who got it wrong. When we told him Grad refused to certify the Pujols autograph, the seller wrote, authentication of a signature is a subjective opinion and not an exact science. This autograph was obtained in person. I handed the helmet to Albert. He signed it and handed it back. Steve Grad's boss, PSA President Joe Orlando, would later tell me, our experts, just like any experts, don't get it right every time. But if Steve was emphatic that the autograph was fake, it says something. The bottom line here is the only sure thing in the world of celebrity autographs is the one you get for yourself. For the On Your Side Investigators, I'm Rachel DePompa. And remember, our team of On Your Side investigators, they're always here working for you. If you have a story idea or consumer complaint, just send them an email to investigators at NBC12.com. Tomorrow's forecast tonight in high definition. This is NBC12 First Warning Weather. Hey, there's snow to our north today, earlier today in Pennsylvania, up into the northeast. This picture is on our Senate to 12 website at NBC12.com where... A viewer just uploaded a, uh, a picture set from Pennsylvania, a snowy scene. So if you'd like to upload your weather pictures, you can do it anytime. Just go to NBC12.com, search for, uh, send it to 12. Current temperatures, Elephant Insurance Net Computers, down close to the freezing point. Mechanicsville, uh, Hanover County, Beaver Dam Elementary School at 30 degrees. 36 officially now at Richmond Airport, mid-30s uh, to low 30s throughout most of the area. Still got 43, though, down at Petersburg. Uh, the uh, cold front down to our southeast tonight, high pressure building in, not a huge strong ridge of high pressure, so some cloudiness, low-level cloudiness kind of hanging tough tonight. I think we'll see some overnight through early tomorrow morning. And then the next system, 
right on the heels of this last one. It's going to come out of the western United States and uh, that kind of regrouping out of the Rockies in the southwest. And another potent system headed toward New England. It'll pass to our west through the Tennessee Valley, so we'll be on the warmer side of it. But it will bring us a pretty good bet for more rain from tomorrow night through early Wednesday. The reason we have such a frequent flow of these systems is because of a split flow in the jet stream. The northern cold jet stream kind of locked more to the north much of January. It was a big trough over the east. And then we have the subtropical jet stream, which is kind of a conduit for the moisture across the southern United States. This is what's going to help whip that next storm to the east. And then by the weekend, it's kind of a tricky forecast because how do these two jet streams merge or interact to produce another big storm potentially later this weekend. Let's start with the forecast tonight, though. Mostly cloudy skies into early tomorrow morning, and a chilly start to our day tomorrow. We'll be in the upper 20s to near 30 degrees. Not cold, though, for early February. And then partly sunny skies midday tomorrow through the afternoon, mid-40s for your highs. Clouds come in quickly tomorrow afternoon. By evening, we have the rain coming in from the south. And overnight tomorrow night, a good bet for rain over the area. Maybe even a little mix out in the Shenandoah Valley, that area. But for us, it looks like a rainy night, heavier rain to the west, as we had with this last system. Temperatures in the upper 30s tomorrow night through very early Wednesday morning. We start Wednesday with some rain, maybe a little break, and then the front coming through with more rain into midday. But then by afternoon, westerly winds down sloping east of the mountains kind of warms the air up. So we'll have a warm afternoon. Highs near 60 Wednesday before colder air, dry conditions come in for Thursday and Friday. 30 degrees your early morning temperature for wake-up weather. Just some... Partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies, light northeasterly winds. 40 degrees at lunch hour tomorrow, late afternoon about 44. Cloudy skies then, then by early evening that rain starts to come in from the south, about 40 degrees, 7 p.m. temperature. Tomorrow night we have periods of rain likely down to 37 degrees. A few showers early Wednesday, then some afternoon clearing, highs of 60. Then sunshine returns Thursday at 42, mid-40s Friday. The weekend's still tricky. I just looked at new computer guides. Now it's kind of pushing all the precipitation to Sunday night into Monday, so we'll keep an eye on this. But right now we'll call it rain developing Saturday night through Sunday, probably changing to some snow before ending. But we'll have to watch this. This is a very tricky system, again, for the area. But it will be a chilly weekend. Precipitation will be likely drying out, it looks like, by Monday. But that will be the bigger storm out of these. But more rain headed our way tomorrow night into early Wednesday as well. Well, more 12 News and Sports coming up. Buffets, food carts, schools, even retirement homes. No place is completely clean. I'm investigating claims that some local kitchens made people sick. And what you can do to keep your family safe while dining out. Tuesday at 11.